The males rub their chins against the female in the hope of stimulating her. They create what is known as a mating ball around a single female, a mass competition in which there can be few winners. This one female may be their only chance to mate this year. How does the female, for instance, choose that lucky male among the hundreds of suitors? Currently, we just don't have a good feeling for that. In many other species of mammals, for instance, the big males are the ones that mate with the females. In the case of the garter snakes, that's just not so. Sometimes we find large females mating with small males and vice versa. So there are some other cues that are important to garter snakes that enable females to choose the proper mate. The females, after they leave this den, will disperse out into the fields and marshes where they'll feed over the summer, and that's where they're going to give birth at the end of August. The babies are born live, and there's a mystery with these babies. There's a lost year, we call it, because in the fall, immediately after giving birth, the females and the males, the adult males, will return to these same dens. But the babies are a mystery. We don't know where the babies are. There are no first-year snakes in this den. So where are they? Where do they overwinter that first year? That's a great mystery to us, and we want to try to figure that out. In most other species, like these Australian black snakes, rival males will fight each other one-on-one -on -one for the right to mate. But this combat can be a remarkably civilized affair, more ritualized dance than deadly battle. In the pine barrens of North Carolina, the corn snake emerges from its winter burrow. It is spring, and he is ready to mate. With snakes, mating is an act of sinuous grace and beauty. Around a month after mating, the female corn snake lays her eggs in a secure hollow. Parental care ends here. The corn snake embryos develop inside the protective leathery shell. After about two months, the young corn snakes break through their shells.
Some emerge immediately. Others may wait several days before heading out alone. Throughout human history, snakes have been the object of myths and legend, often as demons. In the Garden of Eden, evil was embodied in the form of the snake, condemned forever by God to crawl on its belly. Yet there are many cultures where snakes are revered and endowed with magical powers. In the northern Transvaal of South Africa, a human fertility rite is about to be performed. As the young women of the Venda tribe dance around the fire, they link arms to symbolize the movement of a python. The python is at the heart of many Venda legends. One story tells of a python marrying two women. Another says that a small python lives inside the women's wombs and plays a vital role in conception. To the Venda, the snake is a potent life force, not an evil spirit. snake to be a god, linking not just the underworld with the heavens, but the earth with the universe. In the language of these lost civilizations, the constellation of Scorpio was called Amaru, meaning snake. The constellation had a spiritual influence over all of Central and South American cultures. It has always been tempting for humans to mythologize snakes. It's not hard to see why. The ancestors of snakes emerged from an evolutionary experiment which left them without limbs. Yet they're one of the great success stories of the natural world. Snakes have been around on the earth for millions of years, and as far as I can tell, they should be around for millions more years. As long as they're not interfered with, there's no reason to believe they wouldn't. They're exquisitely well adapted to the environment they live in. Given the opportunity, they should be going on for millions more years. <laughs> 